come to Geek Blast. Geek Blast, you better make way. You open up your ears or let the word spray. Hey, hey, did you hear the noise? Something just exploded as a mushroom, have you noticed? Geek Blast, clear out the pad. Kids was throwing caca and Chewbacca is a rat. Hey, what? Better call your dad. Something has been growing underneath the doormat. Welcome back, geeks, nerds, and dweebs alike. I'm Mike. I'm Tombs. Tombs. Hey. And we got Stinkfist. I up? am in the corner where I belong. Left or right, man. Left or right. Does it matter? Oh, you put me here. Hangs, wood nut hangs lower, brother. <laughs> it's it's what, whatever. It's degrading either way. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. I know. Yeah, well, uh, James decided to bail on us tonight, which is okay. He's got to keep up his C average, so. Somebody yeah, that's hard. To... That's hard for a British person. <laughs> mm. um, Play the sigh. <sighs> you have the sigh. All, all I, I have all is a... All, all I have is a... Uh, <laughs> the hell do I have here? Where is it? And... Yeah! <laughs> that's all you got? That's all I got. You, you, like I said, you keep all the good ones for yourself. Mm. I thought I sent you the sigh, but all right, whatever. So, so selfish. <laughs> <sighs> But uh, going over the show this evening, we're going to talk about comics, of course. Not too much, probably. There uh, wasn't too much going on. There's some Secret Wars news I got for you guys. Um, of course, we're going to tell you what's on Facebook and what the Facebook crew has been posting this week. Uh, then we have the movie quote at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Is that pronto? Pronto. Well, maybe a little after, maybe before. Oh. Who knows? Um you guys get a chance to get a T-shirt from Genetic Academy. Uh, don't lose that that sword, please. Don't lose that. Don't no. Don't do that either. Okay, okay, okay. It's my kid's okay. Lego. All right, all right, I understand. Leonardo's sword. Uh, Does Lego N- Ninja Turtles? Yeah, you didn't know. Oh, dude. dude no, I Lego need to see one, one later. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know there was Lego Ninja Turtles. <laughs> uh, yeah. So eight thirty movie quote. Uh, the theme is ge- is uh, for this month is comic. No, I'm sorry. Eighties porno. Eighties porno. <laughs> <laughs> Game movies, video game movies. Okay. That's that's a good one. Yeah. Oh. Um, so we have two zero one five eight zero three seven one two is the call, the number to call in and guess the movie quote correctly to win your T shirt from Genetic Academy. I'll give you a hint now. There's probably under ten of them. <laughs> what game probably. movies? Probably. Yeah, I, th- I think there's more than you think there is. I mean, like, is did, there, did, there, did, did, did there's any... a lot of sequels though too, and there's so. a lot of B. B movie ones. Yeah, did, but did anybody think about using a quote from the movie Double Dragon? Oh, oh stink fist! No, <laughs> you ruined it for everybody. And if I did, now I can't. Yeah. <laughs> if you did, now we got to switch. Well, it not quote. tonight. Well, now we don't have a movie quote. Everybody, thank you. Yeah. Oh, no, just oh Thanks, I just fist. I just pulled the tombs. Even <laughs> even though Brendan said that, we could probably play a clip from it, and people still would know what it is. Yeah. You know, it so. was crap. 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 Kaka. But this this uh, this movie tonight is pretty easy, I think. So I'll have a little hint for you too, because I don't know exactly which one it came from. It, it was, hmm? I know the movie it came okay, from, okay. but there was a sure. sequel to it. So, right. but anyway, uh, so yeah, movie quote eight thirty two zero one five eight zero three seven one two is the number to call in and get your T shirt from Genetic Academy. Um, then I'm gonna have some Star Wars news for us. Uh, then after that, Toomsy is going to get into our uh, our game talk. Yes, sir. And mm-hmm. you have a travel guide this week? For, no travel no guide travel this guide week. This week no. so. yeah. uh, then after games, we'll have our trailer talk. Talking about a bunch of trailers we've seen for the week between cool. movies and uh, TV shows and just uh, hanging around the trailer. I noticed uh, maybe you could clear this up for me. A lot of my shows are missing right now. Like, they've all of a sudden just disappeared. Disappeared. Why do they do that? Mid-season finales? I don't know. Because they'll come back, do a couple episodes, and then just disappear all over again for like a month. Mm. Why do they do that shit? I don't know. Mm. What are you watching? A bunch of different things, man. I know I've noticed a lot of it does it. Like, Supernatural does it. Um, the show Lost Girl I'm watching does it because there's a lot of lesbian one-on-one, three-on-three, five-on-five. It changes all over the place. But it's What's it called? Uh, Lost Girl. I haven't seen this movie. It's a, oh, it's a sci-fi show. A lot of hot supernatural lesbian chicks. 
And oh, so it's not actually like uh, showing any goodies or nothing, right? Nah, no. Nah. But a bunch of hot chicks. No, it out. leaves you to the imagination for that. But okay. Um, but it disappeared. You know, it was on like episode six or seven, and I know there's 13 episodes in the season. So where'd you go, buddy? And yeah, maybe they're just uh, prolonging the inevitable. Grim's another one that Mimi watches that she was complaining about. It just fluffed away. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't tell you. I like to know I don't what watch that is. those shows. Maybe around unfortunately. This- Maybe around this, uh, you haven't noticed with any of your shows that they just no, do- because I don't watch anything on prime time. Like mm. I, I catch everything after the fact, on demand, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, so you don't have to worry about that annoyance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I don't have time for. Well, I there. got a, I got a question regarding that. Tombs, would you rather watch an episode as it airs, or would you rather have the convenience of just watching it whenever you want to watch it? Binging, there's just something very personal about that. That just really, really gets deep down inside you know what i mean <laughs> yeah there's nothing that feels quite as <sighs> naughty as, as no just great as binging <laughs> just as a whole it's just wonderful no, no i'd rather i'd rather page. binge any day than have to wait and be patient okay but isn't there something about knowing that everybody is seeing the show at the same exact time that you're seeing it yes, yes you do lose that you do indeed lose that but i feel like sometimes you gain a little bit more depth into the actual story that's being told because you're not forgetting what happened the previous week. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I feel like I'm more intertwined with the story because I just watched the last episode. But you know I mean? once you're done watching it, the week after, it's all gone. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's like by the next week, I'm like totally like, what happened again? You know, and I know I had some kind of connection with something like. Right, but I'm saying even when you binge it, yeah, and then like a week or two later, you're trying to think back, and you're like, oh, I can't remember everything. It's just a mosh mish. I think it has mind. more of an impact on me, though. <laughs> As a whole, when I binge it, I think it has more of an impact on me than watching it solo. What about you? Uh when it comes to Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. I have to watch it the night that it airs. That I'm good with, actually. Game, yeah, maybe it depends on the kind of show, actually, because Game of Thrones. I feel good with doing that, you know, weekly also. I feel very excited to see it, you know. I, I get really pumped up for it, you know what I mean? I don't know if I'd feel that binging it, you know. Mm, mm. Personally, I would love to watch it when it airs. I would mm. love it. You know, it's just a whole regimen of, like, sitting down with your whatever your choice of drink is. And, and you know, you just sit there and enjoy a show. Putting that an hour, hour away specifically for yeah. that. You know, you know, but important piece of time. I can't uh, seem to find the time to watch things when they're actually actually on. airing. Now, it. let me let me ask you another question about watching a show while it airs. You can't pause it while it airs. So, do you ever notice that you're that you're more able to focus when you're watching a show as it airs than you are when you're binge watching? Like, if you're binge watching something, you could pause, get up, walk away, do whatever, and suddenly your attention span you have the attention span of a gnat. Yeah, when, yeah, when what's going on? When yeah. something airs, for some, some some reason, you're able just to sit there and watch it. Absolutely. I used to be able to tune people out and be like, shut up, I'm watching my show, you know? Like, yeah, <laughs> but then there's always the problem of the uh, the infamous commercial, you know, which does break things up a bit, Yeah, you know? So that's almost like pausing every freaking five minutes, you know? Kind yeah, but not, not on HBO, though. Yeah, oh, that's different. But if it's something prime time or on cable, you have no choice. You know, it, it's mm-hmm. going to get broken up. And I, in that case, there, there. I think we found my answer here. I think I'd rather binge watch shows that have natural commercials. You know. Yeah. What I mean? Okay. Yeah, I get that. Um, things yeah. that air week to week without commercials. Besides The Walking Dead, Walking Dead, I could deal with the commercials. Yeah. Well, I was kind of that way with Breaking Bad. I had to watch every episode. Breaking Bad too. Breaking Bad also. Yeah. See, I binge so Breaking good, Bad. You know? That's because you because you weren't on board when we all told you to get on board. No, that was Dave. Dave still um, is banning it from his mind. Why? I I was always down. I just never able was able. He's being to, stubborn. Like, start He's it. being stubborn. Too many people have been like, "Hey, have you seen Breaking Bad yet?" Yeah, and he doesn't like. And that. now now that I've watched it. He's like, you're a traitor. You're, you're oh, a damn traitor. <laughs> he doesn't realize the experience that he's missing. Come on, all right. You want to miss that experience? Then hey, sucks for you, dude. You know, I agree. But at the same time, you know, to each his own. Dave's a certain type of guy. He needs a certain type of show. Come on. There's barely anything, <laughs> anything as exciting in the world as the world of methamphetamine. You know, that is like one of the most exciting things going on in the world today. Death is exciting. Mm. 
Yeah, but that's been played out. And, and robotic prostitution. Watching, watching people robotic rot. prostitution. Robotic prostitution. <laughs> that's, that's pretty exciting. But watching people rot out on meth is is pretty freaking entertaining. You know. Well, speaking of rotting on meth, um, a totally different topic. <laughs> So why were you saying speaking of rotting on meth? I don't know. I was just changing the, the hell, subject. man? I thought you were about to tell me a story about... <laughs> about, about a tooth with a hole in it. Uh, about a yeah. tooth with a hole in it? Hey, that's we already nothing talked to about do that. with the show. <laughs> we talked about that before the show. That is... That's all fair talk. That is something totally different. I don't want to go into it. But anyway. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. Personally, like I said, I, I just... I like to find the time, but I just can't. I got I to gotta watch everything... And then, and then it's a, then it becomes a problem though because then I watch an episode and I'm like, all right, just one more, and then yeah, I mean, then you're a meth addict at that more. point. Yeah, yeah, basically it's no difference. Yeah, no, you start growing the like hives. And I know, yeah, and, and it's like you know, you know, your body tells you you have to go to sleep, and you're like throwing water in your face, just one more. You yeah, know? <laughs> and then you start the itching, you know. So yeah, I guess it's very similar. <laughs> it's it's a bad situation when when. Unless you got nothing to do at all, willpower. You know I mean? One episode and off, That's and, you, you and your do. brain does start to hurt. Like, I really wonder pop. how many people have lost their jobs because of Netflix. That's a good question. I would say the younger population, probably. Yeah, you know, yeah. the more irresponsible type. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it depends. I mean, it, the show can only go on so long. Even if you're binging a six season show, you could run it through in a couple of days. Yeah, but some yeah. of these shows have been on for like, you know, there's some on there for like 12, 13 seasons. Who the hell wants to watch Friends? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I already watched Speak World for World. yourself. Yeah, really. Yeah, seems. really? You like that? <laughs> oh. Right. Um, yeah, so. Cheers. Cheers to that. If you're a binge watcher, please give us a call 201 580 3712. We want to hear what you got to say. And also, you know, if you don't like to binge, you know, let us know. Or, or if you like doing both, let us know which one you prefer most and why. Yeah, yeah no, I, I do want to find out the psychology of the binge not versus non-binge yeah. watcher. Because yeah. believe it or not, most people still don't know what the hell it is. Even if they had done it once or twice, they still don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, they, 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 they haven't identified their own psychosis yet. Uh, they haven't. Yeah. No. <laughs> but, uh, all right, so moving on, moving on. Let's, uh, let's get into some to- comic stuff here. This week I um, was was going through my emails and I I, care, I get emails from different uh, type of people from the Comic Con and stuff like that and this one guy from Marvel just always sends me stuff. Um, let me find his email. Oh, did I not? Did I close it up? Oh, there it is. So um, yeah, there it is. So there's uh, something going on with Secret Wars. And they're preparing for the biggest Marvel event ever. They always say that. Yeah, they always say that crap It's always the biggest. They just changed the ending. Uh, (laughs) Even if it's a giant bubble. It's it's the Secret Wars prelude. And uh, the synopsis pretty much, the universes are colliding. The Marvel universe, as you know, it is going to be destroyed. So they're saying. Now, I, I have a question here. That's been used so much at this point, the biggest event ever. Yeah. Wouldn't you take more notice if... This is a pretty mundane event. Don't pay attention. <laughs> I would. I would totally. This is the worst event. Marvel yeah, yeah. This is th- 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 this is a non event. Look yeah. away. You really don't want to look into this at all. No. You know, yeah. Just, yeah. I'd probably. Yeah. I'd be more inclined to look into it. Um, but in Secret Wars number one, which is uh, just around the corner, really, I think they're releasing it in the summertime. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2015, which is this year, but. Uh-huh. There, it's a prelude to Secret Wars, and basically, after thirty years of Secret Wars, it's been thirty years since you know, they released it and whatnot. Um, I think it was nineteen eighty four was the year that Secret Wars was released, and the new type of thing they got going on here. Um, basically, you know the, what secrets lie in the Illuminati's discovery of of. Uh, the incursions, uh, what threats lie in the universe created by Doctor Doom. Uh, the Ultimates face a more powerful foe than the gods, they say. And Reed Richards is the leader. Okay, now just to be clear, because some people might not know who Marvel's Illuminati is, it's not the Alex Jones type, it's... Oh. Okay. 
it, it's it's well, who is it? It's uh, Xavier, Tony Stark, Reed yeah, Richards, the most yeah. powerful uh, you know mutants and um, characters, pretty much in the Marvel universe. Okay. Um, mm. So yeah, like like I said, the Ultimates face a more powerful uh, foe than the gods, led by Reed Richards, um, and they might be telling us why. Who knows? Uh, Miles Morales, the ultimate Spider-Man, he's got something to do with all of it. Uh, and it's leading all up to this. This episode, uh, this, this uh, Secret Wars number one prelude. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I, personally, 1984, I was a young little buck. You know, I didn't get to read Secret Wars until I was uh, in high school. And even then, now it's kind of fuzzy on some of the stuff because I haven't gotten back to it in a while. Mm. But I know that uh, just uh, being a teen and reading it, it was like, oh man, this is this is some cool stuff. And then also having like Infinity Gauntlet and all those like ridiculous. Uh, we had the best stories from the mid '80s to the early '90s, definitely. Yeah, all think. those ridiculous stories that they came up mm-hmm. with. Um, which didn't do well at all. I mean, they mean? really didn't. They, Why? You're you saying the Infinity Gauntlet didn't do well? It sold millions, They man. might have sold millions, but all those That's why the events, comics are worth shit, that's because what I'm they saying. sold so many. That's yeah, no, they flooded the market. I told you about the guy who sold me my house. He was head of production at Marvel Comics during the 90s. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, I said, why are my comics not worth anything? And he said, he literally said to me, because we knew idiots like you were buying them, so we flooded the market. Yeah. <laughs> What a dick. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, Marvel. <laughs> Thanks, Marvel, for so ruining cool, Marvel. comics. Yeah. Something that you put out there, you're ruining. Speaking of Marvel, what? real quick, I must say, because this uh-huh. is something only I probably care about. Um, I guess it was about a week and a half ago, the beginning of the month, um, my favorite band of all time actually premiered their new video for first time in 17 years, uh, Faith No More. Uh, premiered through Marvel.com, their song Superhero. It's freaking phenomenal. Check it out. Um, you can find it on YouTube pretty quick, or if you go to Marvel.com, you can find the song. It's okay. called Superhero. Really freaking good. If you remember Faith No More and like their old music, you'll yeah. feel right at home. Very well put together song. Well, hey. Yeah, I love it. I like Faith No More. Good stuff. It's very good, good stuff. stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit of uh, comic news there for you on Secret Wars. Um, other things going about the internet... Um, I, I really haven't uh, had much time to scour, so that's really all we got for you on comics this evening. Uh, Tombs, what are you doing? You writing something? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, let's mosey along here and talk about what's on Facebook. Give me a tune, Tombs. I don't got one. Come buddy. on, you always got to do something. Bing, bing, ding, ding, ding. Facebook. Um. Yeah, so starting it off here, Dr. Essex, good old D.E., Dr. E., posts this uh, definitive, the definitive Back to the Future documentary is coming out. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen it or not, but uh, Back to the is Future that, turns 30 this year. Is that multiple DeLoreans? Yeah, actually? it's a picture of Just multiple DeLoreans. Just a crew DeLoreans. of DeLoreans yeah. cruising down the road? Wow. It's amazing that they're actually, uh, you know what, I don't even think they're running. <laughs> It might just be uh, They're just chilling, just chilling there. Yeah, somebody's pushing them yeah. from behind. <laughs> oh yeah, see the guy in the <laughs> background pushing. <laughs> oh my! Um, but well, yeah, I so mean, how hard can it really be to just custom, uh, just just find a chassis and make something look like a DeLorean? You know, it's not actually. I was riding down the road the other day, and there was there was a DeLorean on bricks in this guy's driveway down the road from me. So I was like, "Whoa, man, is that a DeLorean?" And uh, sure enough, I I stopped and. Checked it out. It was it was DeLorean. The whole body. He had he had the, uh, the what are they called? Suicide doors, right? Or no, those aren't the suicide. wing doors. Wing doors, right? Um, and yeah, I didn't get a chance to talk to the guy, but it's uh, yeah, it's a cool thing to have. I wouldn't uh, put it on my top ten, but yeah, know. that doesn't answer my question though. I I, <laughs> I thought you were going to say that he that he took a regular like a Camry and made it look like a DeLorean. No, they're real. They look like real DeLoreans, but um, I don't know. I mean, if you look at them, they're all pretty much identical. 
I think. I mean, actually, the ball. I guess you could customize one. any car to look similar to a DeLorean, yeah. but I mean, unless you got that boxy yeah. look to it, I mean, it's newer cars you can't. Do well, that. the one in the front there that has the gray bumper, and then yeah. the one in the back doesn't. It's got a black bumper, yeah. Yeah, I think it's gray, right? In the movies? No, it's just the black strip is missing. Oh, so that's guy that only got pieces <laughs> of it. He's only got pieces. Um, Reese's pieces. So if you're a big fan of Back to the Future, check out that post from Dr. Essex uh, about the definitive documentary of Back to the Future. Okay. Um, Tombs. Yo. Community post. Uh, ten times Ten times Supernatural made you, made you sob like a little child. Never. It made Has me it ever me. happened to you? It made Mimi sob like a child a few times. <laughs> and that's why me. she's posting it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever sobbed a little bit to any particular show. How about you? I don't know. I, I think maybe something happened when I was like five. I, I came across something. I, maybe it was like Little House on the Prairie or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I wasn't expecting it. And I turned it on. It was just like too much for me. Yeah. That happened to me during the movie My Girl. Oh, my girl. Uh, with, that one, I was too old. When Macaulay, with, uh, was Macaulay, Macaulay, Culkin? When Macaulay Culkin got stung yeah. by all the bees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was already 12, 13. So. That's all right. I was, I was more in touch with my feminine side at that point. When I was about five or six, I saw the movie Old Yeller, and that made me cry. Kojak made me cry. Kojak? Yeah, with the dog. Hmm. Or Cujo, I'm sorry. Oh, Cujo. Yeah, Kojak. Oh, yeah, Kojak. <laughs> Kojak's the bald the, guy. The bald Did detective you made you cry. Just cry? The frightening dog or Why? Because was... he reminded you of his uncle, of your uncle? <laughs> well, <laughs> hmm. um, yeah, so check out that post. And we got uh, Dr. Essex posting uh, a little pic of uh, Batman or Batflack, if you want to call it. Um, There's the chin. He's got the chin, man. There's that, that chin. That you could, ass chin. Do, you do, don't do, know what that chin is. Okay. Stick toilet paper. Do you feel that everybody's been assaulted enough with the fact that Ben Affleck is now Batman that they've just sort of accepted it? Yeah, it's been accepted by now. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I so. think so. But I mean, now now we kind of just want to see the movie. You after know? seeing his face in the cowl, like I think. Do you think that's why they announced it like three years out? Probably, brother, to get rid of all the shit. Yeah, ahead exactly. Of- I mean, that, that might have been gen- that might have been a genius move. Probably, yeah. If they didn't do it on purpose, then it worked out the way that anybody, you know, could have hoped on but, their uh, side, you know. So. so, yeah, there's a little picture there, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, and on the top <clears throat> it says, uh, Justice is coming. <laughs> yep, and the only really thing that's going on is his chin is reaching for the words underneath. And the S on Superman's chest, you see it? Yeah, yeah. it's just kind of reaching greedily. Greeting, gre- greedily for greedily. everything. Yeah. Um... Good old Natty posting some stuff on uh, about Leatherface. She's all into that horror stuff, as Another you know. Another Texas Chainsaw movie. I know. How, wait, how it's many prequel. prequels? Yeah, how many prequels have been made already? This though? will be three, I think. Why oh, do yeah. they? Why do they keep doing this one? I don't know. And they're saying Sam Strike to play young Leatherface. I guess in this one he's gonna be like ten. You know? No, he'll probably be a teenager. Smaller guy? No. I don't know, but there they had many. They're gonna show how just, he becomes such a crazy son of a bitch. Yeah, gosh. maybe maybe this is actually gonna show his yeah. progression. You know, unlike the other ones, he's just there. They'll give him yeah. some kind of uh, depth, you know, on on his character. His character, yeah, like from. who he is and where he comes from, kind of like in the Halloween remake of uh, White, uh, White Zombie. You know, White Zombie. Yeah, he mean he no he he means the yeah I know exactly what he means. Rob Zombie. Yeah, oh, Rob, 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 Zombie. Rob Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween. Yeah, there where we he actually uh, started. You had the... all the right words. They just weren't ordered correctly. I, I said white zombie instead of uh, Rob Zombie. That's what happened. Right. Uh, so, yeah, we got some more stuff here from Natty. Posting some uh, <laughs> uh, pastry chef Annab- ha- Annabelle Lecter will turn your nightmares into cake. <laughs> mm. So I guess it's uh, a little article about Annabelle Lecter and stuff that she makes... Which so wait, so what what do I do? I go to her, I tell her what my nightmare was, and she she picks up on a, a single yeah. image of that she nightmare, makes cake, and yeah. she makes a cake. This yeah. one is of soil, uh, a dirt pit with a skeleton, like some kind of grave. Yeah, so it's kind of like uh, a chocolate mousse cake, probably. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> delicious. It's probably rather delicious. But if you're a horror buff, so, that, but did she say who's not, did, did, like? Is it always signed with? And this was a nightmare by. <laughs> mm. That would probably be. Uh, 
smart for her to leave her mark. Yeah. No, 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 not necessarily her mark. Personalize it. Like, this was a nightmare by little Timmy. Oh. You know, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like a mushroom ghost or so, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> just peas on the cake a little, just in the corner there. Just a tip. Yeah. Um, or like that guy in high school who used to leave pubic hairs in the, oh, uh, never mind. We want to forget that. about that guy. Yeah, we want to forget about that guy. Please. Tombs, one day I really want to know what happened to you. <laughs> what happened I ju- to me? I just want to know what happened it, to you. When like, it Mike happened. was pretty much with me the whole time, so he knows. It was all the crap that I really rather not talk about that either. But. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> um, next, Natty, Natty posts a little something off, to- off of her topic, but uh, 43 facts you probably didn't know about 80s cartoons. Oh, God, 43? Yeah, and oh. I'm, I'm going to tell you a couple of them here, which interest, right. interest me, but uh, right. the name Optimus Prime is a combination mm-hmm. of two Latin words. Optimus, meaning best, and prime, which comes from the word primus, we know that. which means first. Yeah, I mean, I think most people knew that one. Yeah, well, the prime yeah. one, I didn't know the Optimus one. Well, I'm trying to keep it simple here, guys. Come on. Uh, That's cool. In the very first episode of Thundercats, the Thundercats are shown on their home planet, what? Thundera. And they're naked. But naked. Wait. In the Schlong, cartoon. Swinging and everything, dude. They swing back and forth. In the cartoon. Like- wait, no, wait. Tombs, I don't know if you're joking or not. Um, I am joking. No, okay. no, yeah. There's they no, they were no, naked, but they didn't show any Yeah, it was just uh, kind of like. Man parts. It was anything. kind of just like, you know, curvature. It was like Barbie naked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. You know, Chitara's. Yeah. Bust was covered by her fur, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Just a massive amount of pubic hair, basically. But here's a fun fact of uh, Thundercats. The Earth that they go to is actually a future Earth. I don't Yay, know. fun! Back yeah. Here. <laughs> but, uh, oh, did see. you know Earl? Earl uh, Hyman? He actually did the, um, the voice for Pantera. Hyman. <laughs> he said Hyman. Yeah, yeah. Earl Hyman. He's best known for playing Grandpa Huxtable, bro. Oh, on the Cosby, the Cosby show. show. Yes, yes. He was the voice of Panther. Yeah, he was the voice of Panther. Yes, yes. Earl Hyman. And I actually didn't know that till right now, so I'm actually kind of surprised. That? I know who he is. But... Uh, what was the Japanese Transformers cartoon series called? I'm going to rape this girl. No. It's Ooh. called Fight Super Robot Life Form Transformers. <laughs> oh, my I God. Swear. <laughs> oh wow! Um, yeah, so a couple more here, and then we'll be done with this. Uh, Phil Hartman was the voice of Mister Wilson on Dennis the Menace. Phil Hartman, and <laughs> let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Where's Garrett? Garrett, who though? That didn't make any sense. Oh, Brad Garrett. That's who it was. Who's best known for playing uh, Robert on Everybody Loves Raymond? Mm-hmm. The guy with the deep voice, you know? Yeah, yeah. He was the voice of Hulk Hogan on Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. Why wasn't, why wasn't it just Hulk Hogan? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you would he think was, it was Hulk Hogan, nah, right? He was, he was busy. Brother. <laughs> he was busy at the time. Yeah, he... <laughs> Uh, but he got he he probably got paid for that cartoon. I'm sure. Probably, yeah. Of course, uh, like this. Garrett also provided the voice of the robot dinosaur Trypticon on Transformers. Who the hell's Garrett? Just Garrett? Garrett, the guy, uh, Brad Garrett. Oh, yeah, great. the guy that we just established thirty just seconds ago. <laughs> so sorry, don't know who he is. <laughs> who is he? You never watched Everybody Loves Raymond? Maybe once. He's Raymond's he's brother. The to- yeah, he's the tall one. The big yeah. toad guy? Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. Yes. I got you. Um, Harry Mandel voiced Baby Animal, Bunsen, and Skeeter for two seasons on The Muppet Babies. And after Mandel left, um, Dave Coulier. Dave Coulier? Yeah, from Full House. <laughs> yeah. he, did, uh, he did the voice after that. Joey. He was Joey on Full House. After he cleaned out yeah. all the hair that Mandel left behind. Yep. <laughs> He also did the uh, Peter Venkman on the real Ghostbusters uh, series. Uh, what, Mandel? No. no. Coolio? Coulier. 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 Coolio. <laughs> Coolio. <laughs> um, Gem. Do you guys remember that cartoon? Bigly. Gem. That sounds like a Japanese anime thing. Oh, you remember, you remember this cartoon, Tombs? Look at the picture. Oh, uh, yeah, with the yeah. dancing, with the, frolicking. 
the chicks. four chicks in the band, and then they they were like fight uh, crime fighters too. Yeah, it was pretty crappy. There was 151 different songs in the 65 episodes of Gem. Wow, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I'm sure 99 percent of them were horrible, but <laughs> I'm sure there's one catchy tune in there. Um, He Man. The toy line was actually created before there ever was a cartoon series. Did you how, know that? How, 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 how long before? It's not very specific on those details. I'm sure we can look it up. But As um, was G.I. Joe, I believe. I, I, like I said, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure the G.I. Joe cartoon was created after the first figure. It couldn't have been too much. It couldn't have been too much after, though. I think it was 85, 86, and the first figures came out in 84. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'll have to look into that. I'll, believe, I'll, I'll, I'll take your word on that one. We'll have to look into it. I'm um, not 100%. The Wuzzles. You remember that show, Tombs? Yeah, I do. Unfortunately. Uh, with only 13 episodes produced, it was the shortest running animated series, series Disney ever created to date. Wow, the Wuzzles. Ain't that yeah, something, right? Uh, DuckTales is on its way back. You guys hear that? No. They're making a new DuckTales cartoon. Oh, boy. Yeah, I heard that, too. Can't say I'm all that enthused. How, yeah, how did that show become famous? Like, how did the Scrooge swimming through gold become like? Uh, it's that's re- it. it's, I think it's, that's it right there, man. It's referenced prefer, everywhere uh, now. Funny, it is. It is. Yeah, but it uh, is. so that's that's uh that's that on Facebook, everybody. Let's uh let's do our movie quote because it's eight thirty one. Jeez, time flies. And time flies when you're BSing about eighties cartoons. Mm. Um. Let's see. 201-580-3712 is the number to give us a call for your chance to win a T-shirt from Jedi Knight Academy, jkagear.com. Go check them out. Uh, you're going to have a choice from a uh, plethora, ridiculous amount of T-shirts. Um, just choose. And they've only been one. used about three or four times. That, yeah, if you get by lucky, us. if you get lucky, yeah, maybe you might once. get one that's been worn by Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well then you get a, oh, you get a, that, yeah. that armpit smell. You get the yellow pit. The yellow yeah. pits. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're selling those T-shirts like that now with yellow pits already in there. Are they? Yeah. Oh, see the yeah. million dollar idea. And it's a ten dollars less than uh, r- actual retail value. Huh. But uh, <laughs> all right, so going on the theme this month is. Video game movies. I'm going to play this little clip and I'll give you a hint afterwards of what video game movie this is. Here we go. Mm. Yo, homie, that's a really nice watch. Kind of reminds me of one I lost. He didn't lose it. Pawned it up on 128 a few hours ago. You follow us? I'm only following you. Oh, hell no. Did you a cop or something? Not tonight. That's too bad. Did no, go get my watch. Then go get his watch. Whoa! <laughs> All right, so if you know that video game movie, 201-580-3712 is the number to call to win your T-shirt from Jedi Knight Academy. And you guys have any idea? Uh, I would say, Mike, play it one more time and raise the volume up a little bit. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I would just say one more time. All right, we'll give you a little... Yeah, I mean, you know what? I want to hear it one more time anyway. All right, so here we go. One more time. Homie, that's a really nice watch. Kind of reminds me of one I lost. He didn't lose it. Pawned it up on 128 a few hours ago. You follow us? I'm only following you. Oh, hell no. Did you a cop or something? Not tonight. That's too bad. Now go get my watch. Come on, then. Go get his watch. Whoa! Oh! Boom! 
No idea. <laughs> chica, chica, chica. No idea. I don't know either, dude. Okay. Well, uh, can I you mean, recognize the, the voice, one of the voices in it? There was a black guy and a white guy. Ah. Yeah, I felt no, the same. No, all three of the guys were, oh, well, there was three guys actually in the clip. And they're all white dudes. And so who was the guy going homie, homie, homie? That was a white guy. See? Voices are deceiving. So, mm. um, but the one that pawned the watch, you recognize his voice? No. No? He's, well, see, if I say the name, it just kind of yeah, gives, yeah, yeah. gives, gives away the whole movie. Okay, okay, oh, hold on, wait, wait. Don't, you don't have to give away the name or anything about the movie. This is a video game movie, though, right? Right. What is the motif of this, of this game? Is it a fighting game? Is it an action-adventure? Action-adventure. Action-adventure. Lots of action, and it was a pioneering game for its time. Let's put it that way. Mm, I think I know what it might be. Pioneering. All right, peoples, give the peoples a chance. Tombs and I played it very many nights and days. I just, I just, I just, I just sent you my and, hint. And we've actually talked about the it be, about the the game before. the game before. I think Tombs actually did a travel guide on it once. Okay, did uh did did I get it right? Did I did you see, do you see what I just said? Uh, no, 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 not definitely one. not. Okay. So. All right. Well, let's uh, let's give the audience a chance to uh, yeah, give us to a call in two zero one five eight zero three seven one two, and we'll move along here to the east side, brothers. Uh, to some Star Wars news, news, news. Um, episode seven news. Hmm. Yeah, I heard a thing or two about a thing or yeah, two. Yeah, there's been some things going on. Uh, I know I there's I a new off, movie coming uh, out. What's that? I said I know there's a new movie coming out. Yeah, there is uh, a new movie <laughs> called <laughs> The Force Awakens. I just, I just like being obvious Brendan for the night. Just let okay. me do that. Obvious Brendan. We like obvious Brendan. Um, what was this I heard about a character that may be turning people off? Turning people off? Yes, I heard something. I, I, cl- I didn't click on the whole thing, but it showed some kind of creature type character, kind of Jar Jar looking. I didn't see anything on a Jar Jar type character, but and people um, were like, "Yeah, no." I got I got some of this stuff off of uh, Badass Digest, and it's some plot details. Oh, good. All right, so supposedly the movie's going to start off with none other than the missing hand of Luke Skywalker what? with his lightsaber grasping it. Huh. So. <laughs> So uh, the the main characters, I guess, find this hand in Ew. the desert or something. How the it got into desert. the desert? How what? it got into the desert? I have no idea. Thing should have been eviscerated. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the. I mean it was it was it was cut off in the Death Star, right? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Cloud City. Oh, Cloud City. Never mind. So, so it would have survived. Re- so it would have never had to go through re-atmosphere entry. Right. So but, I mean, but I think they find it on Tantooine. I'm not sure though. Don't quote me. But they say a desert. I don't know what's. Everything on, goes to Tantooine. I thought. I thought that uh, Cloud City, the planet that Cloud City was a gas giant. There's no surface yeah. to that planet. And how did the lightsaber but, stay in the hand the whole time? I don't know. Grasping some I mean, serious grip. Once you never. Once you. Once you grasp it, you never let go. Yeah, but you'd be knocking into things on the way down. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like clang clang. Um, so anyway, these two characters find the hand, and the quest for the movie is to find Luke Skywalker and give him his hand back. What? <laughs> what? Please tell me it's a joke. I, these are all just rumors, I guess. I don't know. but uh, Dude, if that's seriously the plot of the movie, I will jump out the window right now. So, so as the movie progresses, uh, they find Han Solo and Chewbacca. Um, not in the Millennium Falcon. They just It just says... Uh, piloting. That's all they says here. Um, mm. But as they find out that uh, Han hasn't seen Luke in 30 years, supposedly. Um, so he doesn't know where to find him to give him his hand. So they join these two on the quest to find Luke Skywalker. Um, where this goes, nobody knows. It doesn't go anywhere. This movie sounds doomed. Doesn't it, bro? <laughs> I was just going to ask you what you thought. I feel like it sounds horrible. I think also... If it really revolves around a hand. Well, I don't know. It, it starts off with the hand. It doesn't revolve around it. It could have been anything. Why not pick a piece of Darth Vader's mask? 
you know, or a piece of the well, Death Star. Well, yeah, no, no, that's true. I mean, like, something that was a little bit a, a relic that was a little bit cooler. Yeah, dude. I mean, a hand. You know what? How about like finding the body of the Emperor and trying to bring him back to life, or something like that. Well, that already happens where, you know, yeah. the Emperor made a clone, he made many clones of himself in the Expanded Universe. Expanded Universe, but they got rid of the Expanded Universe. Uh, they didn't get rid of it totally. I, I think See, I'm not clear on this. Is it gone? Is it not gone? It's gone, but And why is Gareth Edwards directing the spinoff movie? Can somebody help me? <laughs> mm, <yeah. laughs> what spinoff movie are you referring to? Because there's many... The, the, Star Wars, the, the only spinoff movie that has a title so far, I think it's uh, uh, Star Wars the... What's it called again? Hold on. Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna look it up. Anyway, the, the, the Boba the, Fett one. No, the one, the one that, the one that only, the only one that has a title. The one that Gareth Edwards is directing. The guy who directed Godzilla. Oh yes. The missing fingernails. Uh, he's he, he's England's version of a hipster. <laughs> mm. Um, yeah, I don't know the name of that one. Unfortunately, I didn't catch that that update. But uh, supposedly, uh, there's a new super weapon in this uh, series, like we had the Death Star in the last ones, Mm -hmm. uh, which destroyed entire worlds. Yeah. This super weapon will destroy entire solar systems. And please don't tell me it's Luke's hand. Who knows? I I couldn't tell you. Speculation might be that Luke's hand is maybe the key to activating it. You stick Luke, Luke's hand into the weapon, and it. Ah, oh, oh, this God. this movie is so doomed. Oh yeah, it really <laughs> it's, it's, is. I mean, it's like don't even bother. Get rid of the robot. Get rid of the soccer ball robot, and just you know, pack up, go home, Mister Abrams. Well, that's uh, one of the things where they're hating on now is that super. Uh, you know, the the soccer ball robot that was supposed to be the design supposedly for R two D two, from what I understand. But uh, Lucas went away with it or something. So yeah, for good reason. Yeah. But then he went with Jar Jar Bick, so you know. Yeah, so who knows? Yeah, Lucas you know, you Lucas's Lucas's judgment is questionable at best. It is. When you get into your older age, you decide to get a little soft, I guess. You and know? I, I find it just so hilarious that he tried to put input into the movie. They're like, Nah, 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 go away, Lucas. I, th- I thought that was <laughs> no. Cool. I th- I thought he was like yeah. I. I remember watching an interview with him after the after the um, the the uh, first trailer for the new Star Wars came out, and he goes, "I haven't even seen the trailer." Like he seemed to me like he didn't even give a shit. He's just <laughs> saying that, you know, the acting like, oh, I don't care. I, I find it hard to believe he didn't see something that was produced. Yeah, no, he cares. It's his, what, his I, baby. From what, from what I understand, the fall of Lucas Arts in a hole, like when they were like their game section that yeah, they had, yeah. was because of Lucas and his like. I heard he wasn't good to work for. Yeah, he was horrible he was to a work monger. for. I read it in, uh, I think I read it in Game Informer. But we talked about this. We had an episode yeah. where we talked about it in depth. And, you know, the whole crew, were they would come to the table with whatever, and he'd scrap the whole thing and make them start over and stuff. No, wait, this was, this was during the, the prequels. No, this was like during games and stuff. Yeah, like that for gaming. Yep. Games. Well, most of his games were pretty good, though. Most of them were actually well, bombs. They, yeah, but they didn't do good, yeah. Yeah. They might have been cool games. Yeah, but... I mean, I enjoyed... I don't care if they were bombs. I enjoyed playing a lot of them. Well, you know what the yeah. thing is, Brennan? They got better towards the end. When you had, like, uh, Bounty Hunter. Um, you had uh, the Battlefront games were great. You know what I mean? They did get better towards the end. The I mean, that, that Force... The, the, the Bounty... first Force Awakening game is, is incredible. Oh, Force Unleashed games. Yeah, too. Force Unleashed. I mean, Force Unleashed. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great and games. They got better, and I don't know what the hell happened. I mean... Well... Lucas basically uh, nobody wanted to work with Lucas. With Lucas, he's a the other the third party in um, gamers. You know what I mean? Like, who were some of the uh, parties that worked with them? Bioware, I think, was one of them. Yeah, Bioware. EA worked with them. EA. I know that. Every single one of them would come like to the table with something, and Lucas would be like, "No, not good enough." Yeah. So it, it started. It started getting really bad because you know because of that. Uh, from what I understand, but uh, I know I get a little repetitious with this, but just think of how many poor souls were lost in his gobbler. Ah, uh, you know, the gobbler. I can't think. Of, <laughs> stop thinking about it. I know there's a lot of souls lost. Um, know? I have tombs. I'm, 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 I'm unclear on what you mean. Like he eats children? No, in his <laughs> neck. Yeah, there's people lost in his neckline. <laughs> so it's like the bo- it's, it's like the blob, like Steve McQueen in the blob. Yeah, yeah. 
But it's, it's like that that, that, that that droopy neck thing that he has. He swallows people in there. Oh, okay. Know. Convinced he does. Yes. <laughs> um, so there's a new villain called, uh, well, he wasn't new really. They've introduced an Inquisitor to the uh, Rebels cartoon. But uh, supposedly there's um, a whole Sith colony of Inquisitors. Um and they're going to be the villains in, in the new movie. Now it's it's played by that guy who's the uh, who's on that show, girl, the Lena Dunham HBO girl. You know, it, they haven't actually confirmed who or what character. I, don't, I, th- I I thought it was confirmed that this the girl who the guy who plays Lena Dunham's boyfriend in the in the show Girls. I thought he was the villain in the new movie. Is that the is that the tall guy with the? Because uh, this this guy's like six foot. I think they said you just that. described half of America. But go ahead, try again. F of mm-hmm. America is six foot. Mm, nah, I think of all the border so. jumpers. Yeah. What do you mean? Don't. Yeah. Oh, oh well, yeah, that's a good for, point. That's uh, a good point, Tombs. Topics. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah. So anyway, the villain's name is Kylo, and he's gonna be. Uh, I, you know, I I can't remember the name of the actor that you're talking about, but I I think you might be right because. There was a couple of different uh, people that were lining up to be the uh, the villain. But hold on, I'll look it up. Yeah, I'll look it up. Yeah, here we go. Adam Driver. Adam Driver. Uh, he's Lee, he's the lead that, role for the. He'll reportedly yeah. play the key villain of the film, and yeah, so he's so Adam Driver is the Inquisitor, right? Or or a well, Inquisitor he, because yeah, you're saying a, there's a colony of them. Yeah, well, there's a whole. Uh, Secret society of inquisitors, and they're basically like Jedi hunters for the oh. Sith. Um, what was yeah, it? what was so, that? That was Tomb's making is, is there, yeah, just, was, weird sounds. There's a cat in the room. Uh, there is actually a cat in the room. Is it? Yeah. I'm not. I haven't felt humped at all tonight. Yeah, she's not uh, in the humping mood tonight. It's oh, a shame. I like her better when she's not trying to hump. Uh, I don't lie. I like it better when she's trying to scratch my face. <laughs> uh. um, so, yeah, there you go, everybody. Yeah. It's Star Wars news, and it's time for Toombs' games. Yeah. I don't have a whole lot tonight. You know, this month has been a little slow. Sluggish. But I do have some news, a little something here, a little something there. Um, one of our favorite companies, Bethesda. Bethesda. Um, at their upcoming, they're they're finally going to be involved with E3 in June, and um, there's going to be an announcement of a major game. So it's I'm it's, it's, it's got to it, be Elder Scrolls Six. It has to be. It's got to ha- be. All right. It's it, it, not necessarily though. It's either an Elder Scrolls, a Fallout, or it could be Dishonored Two, which I like very much, but it doesn't have nearly. Quarter of they they've been talking about they've been talking about Elder Scrolls Six being Argonia for for almost two years now, but Fallout's been missing for longer. Mm. You know, think about how they just yeah. did Elder Scrolls Online. You know, they may count that in their own way as a full game. You know, and they still haven't released Elder Scrolls Online on PS4 and Xbox One. Which that's I coming on. That's yeah. coming out June, I think. Is it June? I thought it got pushed back again. I thought I, th- I think it's June, but it's not worth it. I mean, I I played the game ad nauseum. And it's it's really? nothing like, couldn't do it. Yeah, it's just, it's just. I mean, if you're expecting a Skyrim like experience, no, no, I'm not, I'm not. But I'm expecting a good game. No, it's not. The only thing, I, the only thing, because I I never played World of Warcraft or any of those giant MMOs. Right. But the only thing about it that I liked was the uh, the PvP where you would join up and you'd have these massive wars. Right. I mean, they were they were so massive, like my computer would crash during them. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, it's it's really not worth paying a fee, a monthly fee to play it. No, it's not. It's it, yeah. It's sixty dollars to buy the game, and then sixty dollars to play for the year, and then sixty dollars to go on Xbox or PS4 Live. Yeah, that adds up, brother. Yeah, that adds up real quick. So that is not a good business model. Right, for so that much anybody, money, you baby, be, you better be playing the best freaking game in the world. Why would anybody yeah. want to play it on consoles then? You know. Well, consoles are less li- likely to crash over PCs, believe it or not. Yeah, but not if you're paying that much money. No, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, cares about crashing. You're paying a hundred and eighty dollars. Well, just to play already, that game, 
Now, now PlayStation Plus is pretty nice because they give you all the free games and everything a month. Yeah, so if you're cool. already paying for that, then don't really count that in the you know in the price because I already have it too. You know. Yeah, but you gotta count it because you're spending it. It's still being. But I'll always have it there regardless of Elder Scrolls. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's still it, it's still giving you the access to play. So if you didn't have that, you wouldn't be able to play. It's still console. necessary. Yes, I know. You know what I mean? So you but it's also necessary it to play any multiplayer at all. You know, you have to have it. So I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, Tooms, this is why I don't understand why you haven't gotten yourself a gaming PC yet and just gone to Steam. It's revolutionized the way I look at gaming. I know, I know. Steam is pretty badass, man. I know you get anything you freaking want for a lot cheaper. Well, he he actually great deals all the time. It. He actually was talking about it the other day. Uh, how he wanted to get a PC for games. Tooms, do it, do it, bro. Or and, a Steam box, man. No, yeah. don't do the Steam box. The reviews are not good on that. No. They haven't come out with a good one yet? No, they haven't come out. I mean, it's a little bit more work on a PC, but it's so worth it. I think that's what I don't like, is all the work on the PC. Oh it's like, God, because Jones. I'm a PC and I'm not <laughs> focused wholly on gaming, I'm going to be confusing as butt, you know? Tooms, that's it's not that deal. hard. <laughs> I know it's not hard. It's just annoying. I wanna, when I want to play a game, I want to turn it on and play it. You know what I mean? I don't want to deal with a million different things. Then le- just leave it. your PC on. <laughs> and then and then use the desktop Spend shortcut. More Just, money. Yeah. <laughs> On electric. Yeah, what about the jump in my electrical bill? No, right? it goes into sleep mode. Oh, I don't know. No, it's still eating juice no matter what. Not what that the, much juice. The computer is just so powerful, it burns down my home. You know, oh, well, you home just, crash. <laughs> I don't know. If I could get a decent gaming machine for under five hundred dollars, I think you can. And I and I, I, you and I will talk later. I think I can. I think I can do that for you. Good. Oh, all right, yeah, let me know right. what I have to get. Yeah. All right, so on to other news. EA canceled a little game called uh, Shadow Realms. What? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's another one. They're, they're doing a lot of these games now, you know, with the four verse one type deal, you know, like Titanfall, like uh, Evolve, Evolve yeah. which just came out. And it's been successful, but it's really not my cup of cake, you know what I mean? I've also Left for Dead, you know how that was, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, we left that. These these time. these games, which are basically devoid of story, and it's just multiplayer, you know, garbage. It's not garbage, but it's just not my cup of tea, man. You know, but it's been canceled. Lack of interest in the studio and funding, so we won't be seeing that coming from EA, and which is surprising because EA doesn't cancel much, not recently anyway, from what I've you know seen. Um, also, um. There's been a cool little action-style montage this month in a Game Informer that I'd like to show you. It's basically a model they've they've you know basically gone upon you know uh, what they feel, what elements from what games should be used to make the perfect action game. Thought it was kind of interesting. I'll go over that for a little bit. Oh, let me see what you got there. Yeah, right? I'll show you what I got. Hold on one second here. And, um... Tomb sounds like he just went off mic. He's, uh, no, he's, I'm he's here. Looking, I'm just looking pages, for the pages. Yeah, okay. I had a he's trying to find his montage. Yeah, my montage. <laughs> the mon montag. <laughs> yeah, they did a lot of different um things like this. this well, month. interestingly, are any of you like real avid UFO watchers or, or believers? Not really, man. I believe okay. in UFOs. Okay, did you see the Montauk Chronicles? No, I wanted. I no. saw that though. No, Okay. Is it all about that? Yeah, well, obviously, I think you and I are going to have different opinions on it, but go, all right. <laughs> so as voted by the people to make this the best stylish action game, these elements are needed, okay? You need a story, which this very much surprised me that it, this would be picked. A story like that of Heavenly Sword, if you've ever played that. Now, yeah. I didn't really find anything all that great out of that game at all, so that really surprised me that they'd pick a story from there. Well, now, this, this is just pure action game. Don't think of anything. You're not thinking Mass Effects. You're not thinking Dragon Age. Nothing like that. This is just straight action, you know? Okay. Um, atmosphere, um, Castlevania Lords of Shadow, which that I can agree with. That had great atmosphere, and I'd like to see more of that type of atmosphere used in future games. And it hasn't been. Um, playable characters, as that in Devil May Cry 4. Uh, visuals and spectacle, as that of God of War 3. Loved it. Precision, which I agree here wholeheartedly because I felt it was a great addition to this game. Mike played it with me. Um, Ninja Gaiden Black. Yeah. Um, I have Sigma still on PS3. The way that played and flowed, you know, the combat, it was just, you know, nothing could touch it. 
So I agree there. Unstoppable. Co-op, they're saying Bayonetta 2. Mm. Now, I, I haven't played... I played the first Bayonetta, but there was no co-op then. The second one was an exclusive to Wii U, which I sold because of lack of software. Um... Supposedly it's a great game and it has some interesting co-op and for an action game, you know, and if it does have co-op, it should be taken from that type of co-op. And that it's, game. Just on, it's just on Wii U? That's yeah, as of right now, that's it, man. It's an exclusive. Hmm. So. Weapons in Progression, Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition. Um, post-game, Bayonetta, the first one. Um, boss Fights, Metal Gear Rising Revenge, which had awesome boss fights. They were just very intricate and fun to play through um combat flow devil may cry the newest one the remake which i very much enjoyed have you played it i I didn't i've seen some gameplay of it yeah but uh it it looks good i I liked it you could get it pretty cheap now on xbox one you could probably get it for 20 bucks it's definitely worth a playthrough it's it's the type of game because of how way well the uh, combat is right you'll play from start to finish and it'll hold you just the combat alone Oh, nice. Yeah, it's that fun to play. I like those games that hold you. Hold you for one reason or another. Make binge. Yes, yes. For one reason <laughs> or another. And the reason that does it is because the combat's so well executed. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's basically the elements from which games, you know, should be taken to make the perfect action game. And what would you name your perfect action game? What would I name it? Yeah. What would your perfect action name game name be? I don't know. Fiesta Action Extravaganza? <laughs> <laughs> Part one, two, and trace. Yeah, I mean that's, that sounds like a holiday in Italy. <laughs> that's exactly what it would be, my friend. Mine would holiday be crazy adventure of uh, oh, I come on, uh, crazy crazy adventure of God, crazy adventure, crazy, crazy, crazy <laughs> adventures of God. <laughs> Crazy kayak adventure. <laughs> the great uh, God's crazy adventures. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on. So, um, a little bit on how um, Elder Scrolls Online. We were talking about that. Why is it still missing from PS4 and Xbox One when it was supposed to be released over a year ago? I would have liked to play it. How you know, dare you? The longer it's away, the more I really kind of. Eh. But um, I'm thinking when it is finally released, you're going to have more of a solid package than what was delivered on the PC. No, and that's what they're saying. Bethesda is is staying true to its commitment to make sure that the functionality on console is flawless. Right. Because they recognize that 90% of their customers are there on the console. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Oh, yeah. Um, there, there has been some changes, you know, since it's first come out. I have a couple of them here. Um, you know, since the release, mucho activities and progression... Uh, has been added, you know, progression towards your level 50 uh, players. Yeah, I, that I, happened. That happened to me. Did I, that happen to you? Yeah, no, what play? happened was I stopped playing. I got it when it first came out. Right. And so I played up to, like, level... F- I, I literally played up to level 50, and it t- that took me to about two or three weeks. Right. Uh, then I stopped playing because the game just got boring. So they added... And then, I, and then when, I, when I went to log in, mm-hmm. maybe about a half a year later... Suddenly, I had just like leveled up to like like level ten veteran. Hmm. Interesting. I thought you would have had to work to that. No, but, but it was because because they changed the leveling system. So they just totally flipped it on its ass to where you actually started when you started and booted up your game. You're already altered. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's when you start or if if it's when you cross a certain threshold mm-hmm. that they add all of this shit to it. Was this a plus, though, that they did that? Or was it really just nothing that was Well, it, no, it wasn't a plus because, again, the only redeeming quality, in my opinion, that this game has is the PvP. So yeah. every other player was also equally leveled up. Yeah, okay. All right, so I don't see how that's going to make much difference for the console release, but that is one thing that has changed. Um, there's been a lot of new zones and dungeons where you could become your friendly neighborhood masochist. Whips, <laughs> chains, uh, hack and gash galore. Yummy. Mm-hmm. Gives you a lot of PvP? I'm guessing it does. I'm guessing. Penises I really don't know for sure because I never played the freaking game because I own console. Console. But 2015, it should be out, man. It's got to be out. If they push it to 2016, forget it. I will just take it out of my mind. No, I mean, nobody will care by then. Nobody's going to care by then. Yeah. 
if they get it through within the next couple months, if Mike's saying June or you said June. I said June. I said June. If you're saying June, then hey, you know, I'll give it a shot. But if we, you, so wait, you're going to wait. You're going to pay the 60, yeah. the 60, mm-hmm. and then the 60. Maybe there won't be 60 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they will drop the price because it's been out for a freaking year now. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I hope for your sake that it's. True. I'd rather pay thirty or twenty because something tells me you're going. Something tells 60. me that you're going it all in for one hundred eighty. If it's good, man, I got to look at all the reviews from every angle. You know, I I definitely take what you say, Brendan, with a grain of giant salt. A giant salt. I'm talking like mucho. Like heart attacks. Why like, you don't I, trust I, my judgment? Is that what no, you say? No, I do. That's what I'm saying. I take it with a huge grain. You know, big chunky. Not just the tiny. Not uh-huh. a tiny guy. You know, guy that my car hits and it's a splatter and I can't use the windshield wipers. But um, <laughs> you definitely worry me a little bit on it, and um, some of the reviews have worried me. So you know, if they don't make a great improvement on the consoles, I mean, I can't see it doing any better. You know. Mm. Um, unless it's a game that's strictly made for console and it just should have never been a PC game, you know, which is sometimes the case. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I never played World of Warcraft, so I have nothing to compare it against. Right, other MMOs. Yeah. So, I mean, th- this just seems like, it, it, there just doesn't seem like there's enough life in this game to sustain it. Well, only time will tell. And for an Elder Scrolls, there should be plenty of life. Yeah. And stuff to do, you know. So, if that's non-existent, that's not good. Um, what I am looking most forward to this month, mis- <laughs> this, munch? this month, uh, not munch. I mean, we all need the munch here and there, oh, but munch. this month, um, no carpet included, None. would be the 24th little game called Bloodborne, and um, Bloodborne. that's made by From Software, makers of Dark Souls. You people already know how fond I am of Dark Souls. Um, artwork from every, everything from the art artwork to gothic landscapes i just can't wait to melt into that just world eats man. it all up just can't wait to melt in you know <laughs> um, i'm hoping it's a little more forgiving than dark souls not as so brutally hard but i'm scared that they're going to keep the difficulty level right up there um but i think but with a different too easy though either though no they can't but with a different game they should try a little bit different of a angle you know what i mean than the deathly hard game that you can't beat you know what i mean so yeah that's always annoying makes you break stuff yeah it makes me break stuff and i I, spend more money not only that i I get (laughs) a lot of fatigue and and i just feel like i'm withering away after a while you know Mm. um so yeah bloodborne the 24th if you're a fan of from software you should be right at home if not i think if the challenge level lights up a little bit i think it'll be great for new players also just based on the artwork and landscapes and atmosphere alone, you know. Maybe not necessarily the graphics itself. You know, the graphics are good, but it's really the atmosphere, the way things are portrayed, the way the enemies are portrayed. You Most know? graphics that now are good. Are decent yeah. enough, yeah. Um, the Order, which I've been playing, has the greatest graphics I've seen on a game so far, but actually has no, no substance. No depth, right? You said the game has no substance. Yeah, I remember you telling us yeah. last week. It's a damn shame. So basically, I'm just playing the game to run through the environments to be like, ooh, pretty. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Like, ugh, you can pretty. stand there and just watch something. Or you like look up in the sky. And yeah, like, oh, that sky was done very well. Trip yeah. out at the at the screen. Yeah. yeah. Very pretty. <laughs> but also one of, uh, I know Brennan loves this word, one of the most linear games I've ever played. Linear. linear. One of the most linear games I've ever played, yes. But, uh, Tombs, what did you, in terms of substance, what did you think of the game Alan Wake? That was great. It was, it's one of my I favorite games of game. all time. <laughs> Where the hell is the sequel to that? I know they came out with they stopped they stopped the sequel uh, with Remedy. Remedy was making it. Remedy's had a lot of financial issues. Over okay, here. but they stopped the sequel in favor of the game that they're releasing later this year, which is Quantum, Quantum Break. Quantum, Quantum Break. Quantum Break. Yeah. Quantum balls. Now, did you tombs? Did you play the arcade version of uh, the arcade release of Alan Wake: American Nightmare? No, I did not. Get that man. That's pretty did good. It play, did it play anything like the first one? It's a little bit more action oriented, but it's like it's like playing a Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> now it's not as long as the first Alan no, Wake. It's right? it's it's, no, like it's not. No, it's it's only a fifteen dollar arcade game. You know. All right, I will try. 
I will be on that, and maybe I could get on it before next week and uh, give my opinion and compare it to Little Brennan here. Mm. Um, Mad Max is looking pretty badass. The Mad Mad Max game, yeah, vehicle combat. I I, I heard it was like a cross from like a Twisted Metal, Twisted Metal, and I'd say maybe Gears ish. I don't know, man. It looks different, but it, like first person shooter type deal. Yeah, you know, um, difference but, good. But the the vehicle combat looks really cool. I yeah. mean, there's thousands of ways to up your, your vehicle so it looks different from anybody else. One thing I'm not happy about is with Twisted Metal and the amount that's going into this, you know, this car combat, you'd think there would be multiplayer. But there's not. They're not focusing on it. They just want to focus solely on the single-player experience. But who knows? Maybe it'll evolve to something else once the game does well and then they get the feedback. That they, yeah, they could always add that feature you know, later on. Yeah. But you got this massive world and no like player on player car combat. Not even just like know. not even just like two player versus mode. There is no human versus human. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's just computer versus human. Versus computer versus. Yeah. Eh. Well, but, that sucks. But we'll I, see. Yeah, I hear that. I hear the game. I've seen some it clips. Of it looks good. It um, does. I like the whole twisted metal aspect of it. Mm-hmm. This is a wonderful game, twisted metal. Yeah. So if actually. you add that to an actual game with substance. You know, because Twisted Metal didn't really have much story to it. No. It had a little bit of clips. Yeah, cut it clips. was just like they were cool. bios and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Those, cut, those cut clips are cool you know, yeah. at the end, but um, it wasn't enough to really give it a story. You know. And mixing it with Mad Max World seemed yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. I mean. yeah, and it looks like a pretty freaking large world. So um, They're also releasing Borderlands Handsome Jack uh, edition, which is Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the prequel on PS4 and Xbox One, all shined up. You know, because those were only on last gen systems. So if you're a Borderlands fan, that's where it's at, man. To finally see it in nice, you know, 60 frames per second, good visuals. What do you know? think of that, Stink? Was well, Stink a Borderlands fan? <laughs> yeah, Stink is a Borderlands fan. We've been we've been playing Borderlands uh, every Saturday night on Twitch. Have you? And and, and you know what, Mike, uh, Dan, and I played on Sunday. We got a, Sunday. There's definitely a lot more action. I'm sure. Okay. That's so what, what I told you. It's the weekend. Nobody's nobody's watching it at that time. But so, uh, what do you think about the Handsome Jack edition two in the prequel revised? No, I, I only I only bought Borderlands two just 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 the generic version. I didn't get any sort of add-ons to it. So, do you have any interest uh, interest in playing it again on PS4 or Xbox One? Um, a smoother, sounder game? Not really. Well, I mean, if it's something that you and I are gonna like do, and we're gonna do something with it, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I understand. You know? Otherwise, okay. no. Not really. <laughs> I, I need I mean I need like but it's okay. a cool game. I think it's a cool game. I mean, running around, doing missions. I like the top gun it references cool. and I had Mike play hi- the Highway yeah. to the Danger Zone while we were doing the top gun missions. Um but yeah, I like I like the whole gameplay of it. Borderlands. Yeah, it plays yeah. cool. I love loot. Everybody loves loot, you know. <laughs> loot catches. Um, but Michael, um, on to my grizzly gash friend here. Um, yes, sir. Grizzly will be uh, probably going away pretty soon, but we'll see. What is this? Um, I mean, I looked into it. This montage of heck. Oh yeah. And um, it, it made me tear a little bit because I'm a huge Kirk Cobain fan, as everybody knows. And uh, seeing him as a child, those home videos, and uh, you know, a lot of stuff like of him taken just at home, you know, with his wife, just being a normal person, kind of, you know, just kind of. Shed normal, a different light on the guy, you know? Normal person is really a point of view. Yeah. You know, you know doing normal, sort of normal things. Sort of normal Well, do things. I do normal things? No. You know, if I was on camera, <laughs> would I be doing anything normal exactly? No, nobody who doesn't have a job talks about buying a $500 machine. It's not normal. <laughs> yeah, that, no, it's not normal. It's Actually, not. it's more normal than you probably think. Unless you're not. How do I get the? How do this I acquire America, these things? Guys. Yeah. Come on. It's America. You could acquire these things even this if you don't America. have a job. If you if you don't have a job, you can still acquire these things. Trust yeah, me. If you don't have a job, you still can raise your family and eat for free, and because the government will pay everything for you. And I have a job. I'm right here. I'm I'm here with you. That's right. Yeah. You know, we're making a lot of money here. You're right. Yeah. We're, yeah. Doing, we're, we're doing all right. We're living yeah. the dream. We are. Some might call it a nightmare. I hate, but... I hate when people tell me that they're living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> we're living the geek blast dream, man. So anyway. Uh. So yeah. I guess we're moving on to trailer talk, and I I know that. Uh, I just seen this trailer for, um, for the movie. I mean, it looks like a really in-depth documentary of Kurt Cobain and his life from young buck to crazy musician. 
Um, yeah, which I'm in- totally interested in yeah. because he's one of my favorite musicians. I definitely but. would give her a watch, I think. If, you, if you're a on, fan, man. If you're a and fan, I'm not really big on music documentaries. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, I think this was played already at the Sundance Film Festival. Yeah, it was. Right? Yeah. And, um, you know, it got great reviews on, at there. Yeah, it so, did. I mean, He's just one person that's had an interesting and sad life, you know. So. Yeah, and that is what people in general eat up. Yeah, you know, do, unfortunately. Other people's misery. For me, it's not about the misery. It's more about just learning more about his life before he was right. famous. You know, that's what I'm interested in. Him before him, just as a Joe, a regular Joe, the you Joe know? Schmo, not Kurt yeah. Cobain. Yeah, exactly. But I would definitely give it a watch. I mean, I, I the trailer looks cool. Check it out. You could probably just Google it. It's uh, Kurt Cobain montage of, of heck. heck. Yes. So give that a check. To see. Uh, and there should be some new music in there, I heard. I heard there will be some, maybe not a lot, but some kind of... All right, Toons, how much, how much involvement did like Dave Grohl, Francis Bean, and Kurt Cobain's parents have in this? A lot. A lot. So, so a lot, so, I mean, because they've got, they've got images of him when he was a kid. Yeah, so yeah, there they was, had uh, a lot so, to do with it. Courtney okay. and Francis pretty much backed the whole thing. Oh, okay. It'll, I thought Courtney and Francis don't talk to each other. No, they do. They do. I think uh, Francis just asked her for some money not too long ago. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What else are daughters for? <laughs> Family shit. Family shit. You know. <laughs> hey, can I get a loan? Hey, she's the one with all the money, so. Hey. Yeah, why not? Um. Yeah, I definitely give it a check. See, you know. Uh, now, Stink, you said you saw that Chappie flick. I did see Chappie. I'm Chappie. I want that. Seen, we seen the. Uh, we talked about the trailer last week, and what did you think of the flick? I didn't see it yet. Okay, N- okay. I I have mixed feelings on Neil, on Neil Blomkamp, uh, Blomkamp, however you say his last name. Uh, the individual who directed District Nine, Elysium, right. and Chappie. Chappie, 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 Chappie. Chappie. Just I just like the name, so I think I'll stay away. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Chappie, Chappie, Chappie. I want it. I want it. I want it. Uh, that's how the robot talked, by the way. Um. All right. I'm Chappie. His movies tend to have a lot of social commentary on it, right? And like, it's like naked social commentary to the point where it's preachy, and it turns you off. Chappie didn't have that. Okay. Okay? And I don't know if I went into this movie expecting to be preached at and was pleasantly surprised that I wasn't, and that's why I like the movie, because I think expectations can dramatically affect the way you view a movie upon first viewing, or if it was actually a great movie. Okay, mm-hmm. so, so I was a little confused by the trailer, okay? It's a futuristic-type movie with robots that are trying to destroy things? What's, no, what's... no, no, no. Wow, okay, obviously. Uh, yeah. No, um... Because, like I said, when I Johanna, saw... Okay, jo- in Johannesburg really? is, is the testing ground for the first robotic police force. Okay. All right? All right. So uh, the company that Sigourney Weaver runs, it's called, like, Teletronics t- or something like that. They've developed a robot that can effectively police the population. One of the robots gets smashed, and the developer of the robots has been actively working towards AI, and he really wants to do that. So he takes the one robot that was smashed right. and uploads his AI program into it. Before he does that, though, he gets kidnapped by a bunch of gangsters, which is basically the rap ba- it's, I think the rap band called Aardvark. There's, there's, there's an awful-looking lady in it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the South African band, I, rap band. I think they're called Aardvark. I don't, I don't remember what they're called. They, just, they look horrible, though. Um, they kidnap him because they want him to turn off all the robots so they can commit more heists. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, but what happens is, while they, kidna- while they kidnap him in the process of trying to upload his new AI program into the Smashed Robot, so he ends up uploading it with the gangsters, and the gang, because it's an AI program and the robot thinks it's a child, the, r- the robot begins to think that the gangsters are his parents. 
So it listens to them. It listens to them and goes around doing things that are carjackings. And- oh, so it's AI movie gone bad. AI, go- but no, but it's it's not gone really bad though. I robot type stuff. Yeah, it's it's not it's not gone really bad. At the end, there's obviously a redem- there's there's some redemptive scenes in it. What I liked about the movie is that. The whole time you were wondering whether or not these ancillary gangster characters were going to just sort of be written off towards the end, like not, not, have, not have closure. You know, some movies do that. Some, they introduce yeah. these characters and then they get rid of them really fast to the point where like, well, I don't know, should I cared about them or should I have not cared about them? You know, the movie, the movie did a good job of, of actually... Closing all you know, directing you towards a character, making you care about that character, and giving you closure about even the small characters. Oh, well, that's always good to find. Yeah, out. and it, it, it was something that I didn't expect from Neil from uh, Neil Blomkamp, the guy who's directing Alien Five. Fuck him. So thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm going to say one thumb up, one thumb down because I don't even know if I trust my own judgment. That seems like something you should take a long time and look in the mirror and uh... no 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 I'm gonna no I'm gonna tell you why I don't trust my own judgment because expectations if you go into a movie expecting nothing and then suddenly you get like a a, a morsel of something it could seriously inflate your view of that movie at the moment absolutely I yeah, agree you're right all right and so I mean I I literally just watched it last night so I I have to come down reassess. Right. Level out, watch again, and then go back in. Okay. So, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Coming, when coming back. back? Uh, I, I it, thought it was March. March, I think. Or is it April? It's, no, it's April. It's, April. April. it's always April, guys. Come on. Is it always April? April. I don't know. So, anyway, um, lots of crazy things going on. If you check out the trailer that they had, they had like a teaser trailer. They gave you little tidbits here and there, but then they had the extended one that I just saw today. And uh, there's lots of chaos, uh, dragons, and the uh, fact that they um, they found that Joffrey, Peter Dinklage Joffrey was actually wearing woman's underwear. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that was a big reveal. A huge, <laughs> huge. Right. Um. So yeah, I mean, I can't. I'm I'm anticipating just to see the first episode and where they're going to go from the last episode when. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, isn't it pretty obvious, though? I mean, they even alluded to it in the trailer yeah. that that Dinklage, that the uh, Tyrion Lannister character, is going to somehow end up aiding uh, the Daenerys Stormborn character. Yeah, mm. most likely. I mean, that's just. But also, he's going to have trouble because she, the, the, the uh, Targaryens don't like the Lannisters, so he's going to have trouble even ingratiating himself with her. I don't. I don't really think so, though, because he's a hell of a talker. You know. What he's, do you think is going to happen with Theo? He's coming back to life. You think he's going to come back yeah, to life? Yeah, he's coming. I mean, there's, again, yeah, even I mean, there's a, a penis. There's a pulse. There's a pulse okay. there. And, and you know, his back. penis was the biggest problem that he had. It's a blessing in disguise. That, so that, with, that, with his penis out of the way, you think he'll be... He'll be a normal person. Well, huh. that would make two characters on the show with no penis, right? Who else? Yeah, no, no, he's uh, the spider. So Lord Varys. Castrated. Lord Varys. Right? Lord Varys. Oh, Lord yes, Varys, yes. Yeah. But I think his is a little When different. they cut my balls off, do you want to hear yeah. the story? You know. <laughs> the, I don't think he was as, you know. If you just got your balls or your penis cut off, it's all the same in my book. I'm is it? I'd rather have my balls taken off than my Do penis. they take the pillar and the stones? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I'd rather my stones than my pillar, I guess, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Do they so. take the broccoli or the Brussels? The Brussels or the sprouts? Mm, yes, <laughs> the Brussels or the asparagus. <laughs> Do you see how we just took a great piece of television and brought it down to the lowest common denominator? <laughs> oh, yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. If yeah. we love it or not, we'll still tear its ass apart. Tear it apart. Mm-hmm. Um, tomorrow land. Nah. Nah. Clooney. I don't like the name. Can we talk about it tomorrow? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't have a show. Um, I, I mean, the trailer looks kind of weird in some sense of, I mean, it's actually, you know, it, it looks cool in a sense, but I don't know. Would, I mean, I'd probably just watch it just because of the weirdness of it. I mean, I would watch it for free, which I will do. Well, Brendan, if we do what you said and go into the theater or watch it with 
You no, yeah, it. no expectation. Yeah. Exactly, but you have to be careful of yourself. This is why you can never trust yourself. Yeah. You go into something and you think you've you've already figured out that this movie is no good, and then you see it, and it's it's a little bit better than you thought it would be. But in your mind, because it's a little bit better, it's 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 godlike. Stretch out with your feelings. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, and it, it, it's probably really not as good as you thought it was. Yeah, well, like people, critics will rip something apart, make me expect nothing, then I go yeah. and see it, and, and I'm actually like, oh, like hey, they were a little harsh. Yeah. You know, so right, I mean, and, but doesn't that make you like the movie all that much more? Yeah, because they hate it. Yeah. Like That's, this thing with The Order, the critics ripped it apart, the game The Order, Yeah, and I've been playing it, and I'm still playing it, and it's not all that bad, because Everybody's I expected crap. You know, everybody's a critic. Yeah, everybody. But anyway, uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's critique some other um, trailers. <laughs> mm. uh, disaster movie returning called San Andreas. Uh, uh, we'll, pass, we'll pass on the that San one. Andreas fault. It has nothing to do with GTA people. Yeah, so it was the first thing he said. Oh, a uh, uh, GTA game? No. Um, so the, yeah. But The Rock is in it, so I mean, he's a good actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. And uh, who's the other chick? Um, oh, what was she in? Oh, help me out here, Fist. Oh, no help from me. Oh, uh, what was her you. name? Did you guys stupid! see the trailer? Stupid! <laughs> you are so stupid! Uh, no trailer. Did you see the trailer, Fist, or no? I saw the trailer, yeah. Who's the chick in there? Uh, <laughs> no. Chick. Yes, yes, her. Chick. I don't remember. But anyway. It's all a lot of uh, destruction and mayhem, and we don't know what really happens. The world is just destroying. It. But doesn't this seem one of those? Doesn't this seem like one of those movies that you just can't believe they're actually making? It's like yeah, this. Well, is, this seems so dumb. I'm expecting for the end of the movie where you know California falls into the ocean. Okay, do you know what I'm expecting when I go into the movie? Nothing. I'm expecting this. If the movie is one giant Rickroll, <laughs> I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, never gonna lift you up or let you down. So anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. After that. Um, so yeah, I, I'll put away the soundboard for now. That's been our trailer talk. Trailer talk. Trailer talk, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, well, uh, it's getting to be that time of the uh, night here where we're going to do some geekly desires. Yes. So we'll just open up with that. Yes. As the show winds down, now it's time for our geekly desires. Meow. Meow. Yeah. Um, Get the- Tombs, you want to go first? Um, yeah, I'll go first. Um, You're going to say Darth Vader's Slurpee Cup? Damn. <laughs> Um, did I say one new mixer? Gotcha. Did I say one new mixer? Yeah, you did last week. Um, Anything no, else? That wasn't last week. Um, uh, did I say I want the uh, Xbox, Spider-Man statue? Xbox with one? The, uh, I, I'd like the old Spider-Man statue that the I sold NECA? to you. I think I said that one, too. Oh, oh the, um, the movie edition. A Steam box. A Steam box you or a game You don't want or that. PC. You don't there want There you go. That. There's my geekly desire. Okay. No. Oh, I, I just want. said either one or the other. So you want either a Steam box or a PC or a gaming, gaming PC. device. Yeah, I, but I'm telling you which one you want. You have to trust me. Okay. Take my hand. Trust. Okay, I'll try. Stretch out Take with my your hand, feet. Peter. My finger won't. <laughs> it won't. Yeah, he can't the, the get through the microphone. Blocking. All right. All right. So for me, it's going to be kind of weird this week. Oh, I have... Uh, <laughs> Of course it is. And, you know, if anybody knows me, I love to eat. And I found this amazing little thing on Amazon. Ew. And and it's a Cuisin Peas. P-I-Z. Piz, I guess that would be. Um, It's a pizza box oven. So it looks like a pizza box, right? But it's an oven in disguise. Uh, it cooks up to a 12-inch pizza pie. It's got a rotating cooking service with top and bottom elements to cook your pizza. Uh. Adjust- adjustable thermostat up to 525 degrees. That's Fahrenheit. 
too bad uh, James ain't here to tell us what it would be in Do you think Celsius. that thing is really going to give you a tasty pizza, bro? You, you I g- know, but it's got cool touch stainless steel handle. Uh, and it, where it runs off 1,200 watts of power. It's only 1.21 gigawatts. And one point. <laughs> Give me the code key, Howard. Give me the code. He needs a code key in the I'm front. I'm sorry. It's seventy dollars and sixty four cents with free shipping through Amazon. Yeah, Prime. it can't be any good. An oven for that much might as well be an easy bake. Well, I mean, that's kind of the the premise for it. I mean, I love pizza, mm. and I'd eat pizza every day. Of the you know, my week. mother and I. My mother got me a gift for Christmas one time. It was called the Presto Pizza Maker, and supposedly it was supposed to fire <laughs> like microwave beams down onto a, a an exposed pizza, frozen pizza. Oh, you lost me right there. I once anything's microwaved. No, but no, no. It's it's no, but it's it, it's not a microwave though. It was it was it was a totally exposed device. Like you would put a pizza on the rotating tray. It would never go inside a unit. The whole thing was outside, and it would just like fire beams on it, right? Supposedly, <laughs> it was called the Presto so Pizza Maker. It, so did it work? No, I, I I never knew. I wrapped it up and gave it back to her for next Christmas. And then she wrapped it up and gave it back to me the next Christmas. So it's a gift that's been re-gifted like 12 times and nobody ever uses it. It probably doesn't even work anymore. Yeah, we have no idea. Well, it's been like 40 years, so now it's probably worth something. <laughs> it's know. a relic. Yeah, it's a relic. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, what about you, Stinkfist? Any geekly desires? In- I don't have a geekly desire that's personal, but I can guarantee I know what a lot of geeks are going to be desiring in 2020. Oh, in 2020, huh? Five years from now, yeah. All right, okay. so what's that? Uh, Mike, what, have we, what, what did we talk about before? Um, are you talking about the last hour and a half? I mean, what have we no. been talking about? Okay, we, we, before the show, we talked about robotic prostitution. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, okay, and... Uh, and <laughs> I thought you were talking about a full compilation Geek Blast box set. No, no, I'm talking, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about... All 57 episodes. I'm yeah. talking about hooking up a robotic vagina to your computer... And look, it's just it's just weird, man. Yeah, exactly. But it's happening though. It's happening as we speak. There. It, what's the name of the company? Hold on. What's the name of the company? Is Teledildonics. <laughs> Teledildonics. They're they're making this all possible. Now these are not the droid hookers you're looking for because it's not like Blade Runner and the uh, the Daryl Hannah pleasure model. The, right. It's it's not there yet. But it might be in about six years. What's with the face on the thing, though? Oh, that face? Yeah, the that looks like Lorena Bobbitt, doesn't it? Though that face? That just kills any. It's, it's kind a blow-up of... doll of some sort. Yeah, no, it's a it's a prosthetic doll. I mean, that looks like Lorena Bobbitt. I, I mean, they could have made a prettier face than they that. Could've, I could they, make a prettier face than they that. They could have made it look like anybody that didn't chop somebody else's penis off. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That's ballsy. And that ballsy. blank stare. Yeah, uh, the, the, the blank stare. Yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying. These are, not the droids, <laughs> these are not the droids you're looking for yet. You know, we all know where this should go and where it will eventually go. Uh, Got to give it time. So, I mean, do you think you'd be partaking in, in this? Absolutely not. But I do want to ask a question. Uh-huh. Do you th- when do you think that it will be a mental disease to fear having sex with a real person uh-huh. as a result of this technology? Oh, you're talking about like Judge Dredd? I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't. No, Demolition Man. Well, let's see. 2020 is when it's going to come out. Give it. Uh, give it a good 10 year study. So oh, I'm saying, when does it get? When does it get yeah. entered into the DMZ? Fear of organic relationships. So it'd be uh, probably about 2035, I would 20, say. 2035. Yeah. I'll give it about 15 years. That, that's me. when it becomes a mental illness. Ew. Ew, you touched me. You have so many fluids. Ew. Oh, so, what's that fluid on you? Ew. What's that up in your tooth? Ew. <laughs> why does it smell like that? Yeah, yeah. Why, does your, why does your tooth have a hole in it? <laughs> why does it have an inch? And why do you stick swords in there? <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, uh, that's not my geekly desire. I don't really ever want to see this happen, but I know it's coming. And you know, if you can't, it's beat really them. coming. But I mean, it, I mean for yeah. real geeks out there that have these uh, type of fetishes. Well, yeah. not even fetishes, but just like these anxieties of meeting girls and stuff. And don't your, if you don't like fluids, fix, right? You know, you want to stay away from fluids. Don't let it get to your head. Yeah, you just like <laughs> cold hard metal. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. All right. All right. So is the show done, guys? I think, we, yeah. I think that's it. Uh, Were you able to come through with me on that uh, stink? Yeah, we asked you. Did you get? Did you see the message board? You didn't even look. Oh, I did. What? 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 Oh, you know, I I told you I can't find that on an MP3. Okay. You so. can't just play it off of YouTube. The pro- okay, the problem with corrosive radio is if I do if I play something on corrosive radio that is licensed like that and it's not an MP3 and I, and it doesn't have the uh, metadata tagged to it, I get in trouble. It's a red flag. It'll automatically happen no yeah. matter what. Yeah. Yeah. They, they will find out if we do. Yeah, it. no, because everything I do is recorded. Uh, is there any way we could take it off my phone? If you if you if you had just got me an MP3 with the with the metadata in it, I could have done it. Stick the wire in your mic. No, it doesn't have metadata. You don't uh, understand metadata. Why can't you just MP3 into the mixer? You can't do it because it's not MP3. Metadata. Oh, come on, man. Metadata. So you can't find an MP3 format oh. of the song. No, I'm not, and, I, and I'm not going to spend the money to go buy it. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, All right, uh, but I, I can do something that is not that that I know nobody has. That I'm not going to get in trouble for. Okay, we All like right. the sound of that. All right, so if you guys want to end the show, just mute your mics, and I will play it. All right, okay. well, uh, let's let's uh, let's say goodbye to everybody. All right. Once again, this has been another episode of Geek Blast, blasting off. Uh, yeah. You guys check out Burnt Films Tuesday, um, yeah. Sunday at Sunday. two p.m. <laughs> Eastern. Uh, yeah, so check them out and. Corrosive Radio, 24 hours a day, yeah. seven days a week. The music all you want, all the time. Yeah. And this is Geek Blast. Yeah. Out! Out! Until they die But then you told them all my history And took away my masculinity And had my character portrayed by subpar actors Times I screwed fans over. I had them believing that the first three films were really done. But Star Wars will be done my way. I don't care what they have to say. I think that they should let it go, and they'll never get a Blu-ray of the Star Wars that you used to know. Didn't have-